Just tell me the truth. Did you steal that money? No. Of course I fucking didn't. What the fuck? Look me in the eyes and just tell me the truth. Look me in the eyes and tell me the truth. Okay. I did not take that woman's money. Okay. If you know in your heart that that's the truth, if you know in your heart that you didn't take her money, then I accept that. Are you fucking kidding me? This is such bullshit. Hey, no. I have gone to bat for you all weekend. And the only reason I've done that is because I know that this isn't you. So just fucking tell, just say it. Just tell me the truth. Okay, fine. I stole it. It's not a big deal. Oh my god. What? I mean, she's just going to fucking spend it on coke. You're just gonna spend it on coke. That could be her rent. She could have kids. Dude. Why? Why did you do it? I don't know, Darby. I don't know. I was there. I saw it. I grabbed it. I thought it would be fun. You thought it would be fun? I'm just really fucking lost, okay? Everything good in my life has just turned to shit. And like Jim choosing a fucking house over me? I mean, he couldn't wipe his ass without telling me first and now he's just fucking fine without me? And then I lost my job and I've been on all these shitty dates. And uh, my credit's fucked and nobody can hang ever because they're too busy. I mean, it's all fucking bullshit. My life is bullshit. And you don't even need me anymore. You're my best friend. Of course I fucking need you. It's not the same anymore, Darby. bad person? No. No, Sarah, I... I think you're really struggling right now. And you could use some help. And I want to help you get help. Because I'm sick of seeing you hurt yourself. I'm sick of worrying about you. It's too fucking hard. Yeah, it's just been hard. It's been a really bad year. Stop, come on. I think getting some professional help would be really good for you. And don't be mad. Please don't be mad. But maybe even rehab. Fuck off. Look, yes, I'm sad, but I don't need rehab. Sarah. I'm legitimately worried you're gonna die. What are you doing here? Come to talk about it? Capital I, capital T, it. Stillbirth. That's the technical term. Well, pay attention. It wasn't just a spot of blood and cramping. She had a birth certificate. A death certificate. A name. They ripped her out of me, feet first. Perfectly formed, just tiny and blue. It's like I used to hear these stories about babies dying and, and think, oh, that's so sad, but at least it's not a real person. And then you get home and you look at the cot and you think, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that?
everything is just so fucking fake and empty. I have love for nothing. Clothes, boys, all the things that used to be so important to me, I don't recognize them anymore. And I look at my wardrobe, things I bought once. Every dress is a ghost. It's just all so fucking fake and empty. So get out. There's nothing you can say or do. I can't remember the first time I caught a fish. You must have been with Dad. You remember your first? No. I do. You hooked a bonefish. I think that thing was probably twice your size. <laughs> Dad wouldn't help you reel it in. He wanted you to do it yourself. I don't remember that. Mm. It was probably twice your fucking size. So I came over to help you reel it in. And you know, I put my hand on yours, which was on the reel. And now, I remember that because, you know, my hands were bigger than yours then. And then we pulled it in together. There's blood. Yeah. That's right, um... <laughs> the fish told a hook or something? Yeah, we had to rip it out. It's like a scene of a fucking horror movie. Everything was covered in blood. And Dad made us clean it up. Okay, I know I fucked up last night. I'm not even sure what happened. Okay, I know it's not easy for you when I come home. I'm, I'm sure you don't want me here. It's not true. I wouldn't want me here if I was you. <laughs> the last time I was here, I, um... Uh, I, uh, I still owe that money and I'm going to pay you back. You don't have to. No, with interest... I'm keeping track, okay? I talked to Dad. He gave me his answer. It's not gonna work out. He doesn't want me to come home? Is that what he said? He didn't put it that way, but yeah, more or less. What'd you say? Danny, it's not ready for it. It's not a good idea. No, is that what he thinks, or is that what you think? Look, you asked me to talk to him, and I did. Mm hmm. And did you try to convince him? Tell me what you need. Money, a place to stay. <laughs> Fuck you. I want to help you. Mm, you want to help me. <laughs> you want to help me. Oh, I'm sure that's why you pleaded my case so hard with Dad. No, I'm sure that's why you did everything in your power to change his narrow fucking mind and convince him to take me back. Or, more likely, you said nothing. Hmm? You just let him call the shots like you always have, huh? I did what you asked me to do. You know, life won't always be perfect for you. Things happen to people. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, one day you'll need something from me. I don't know. You'll you'll lose your job. You'll get divorced. Your kids will. Like one day you'll need my help, and then you'll know. Well, know what? Are you saying I don't help you? All I've ever done is try to help you. I spent my whole life defending you. Yeah, he's done a shit fucking job. stay for the naming ceremony? What's the point? I am Justin Otto with Old Fields and we can all agree I need a haircut. Now Claire, mm -hmm. Mr. Flores has stated that he'd like to go on public record about this relationship. Yeah, well, he spoke, but we'd both like to go on record publicly. 
but ideally confidentially if that's an option. What I need to better understand is how the relationship began. Um, did Mr. Flores initiate the intimate relationship? No, he didn't. We were friends first and I would do his research for him and listen to his ideas. I mean, his brain is just really fucking sexy. You know, I didn't think it would be a crime to transition those feelings into actual sex. I never said it was a crime. Um, I'm merely asking how your first sexual encounter came about. Merely asking? No, that's just a very polite way to ask something that is really none of your business. Who initiated the intimate relationship, Claire? I kissed him first. I hit on him first. And yes, we had sex that night. Yes, it was at Yanko's apartment, but only because he's the only one that actually knows how to cook. And I like a really fucking good paella. He did ask me out to dinner and we, well, I just thought it would be smarter if we kept it private. Look, I hit on him. Hey, I am the creep here. <laughs> I never said either of you were creeps. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's the implication, isn't it? He has to have been tricking me into liking him because of the very nature of his professional position of power, right? Has Mr. Flores ever asked you to do things you're uncomfortable with? What? No. Never? <laughs> well, I suppose he asked me to come here and now I feel uncomfortable. Would you consider your relationship with Mr. Flores serious? What? Oh, well, okay, I'm sorry. Why, why is that relevant? Because it's our job to determine whether the two of you working in the same environment is sustainable. Are you saying that I could be fired? Well, it's just- And you're not gonna fire the fucking weatherman. Claire, I'm not saying that anything is gonna happen to anyone. You know, I, I don't, I don't wanna be here this. This was a mistake and I- Do you need a minute? No, I need out of this fucking room. Claire, it's our responsibility to ask these questions. Yeah, and I feel like I am entitled to a shred of privacy. You chose to come here. No, I, I didn't choose anything. Claire. What? Do you need help getting out of this relationship? Oh my God. Hey everyone, my name is Laura Hamill and I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Hi, I'm Francesca Bianchi and I'm with Connect Creative. I lied. Okay. To you. About? About the miscarriage. I was actually covering for my sister who had the miscarriage. She was pregnant, but her husband didn't know about okay. it. And then so I sort of... Okay. Keep going. And I've stolen things. And I've had a lot of sex outside of marriage. And once or twice in someone else's. There's been a spot of sodomy much masturbation, a little bit of violence, and then, of course, there's all of the endless fucking blasphemy. <laughs> and? And... It's okay. And I can't... It's okay. Go on. Frightened. Forgetting things. People. Forgetting people. And I'm ashamed of not knowing what I... Want? It's okay to not know what you want. No. No, I know what I want. I know exactly what I want right now. What's that? Bad. It's okay. I want someone to tell me what to wear in the morning. Okay. Well, I think there are people that can do that for you. No. No, I want someone to tell me what to wear every morning. 
I want someone to tell me what to eat, what to like, what to rage about. I want someone to tell me what to listen to, what bands to like, what to buy tickets for, what to joke about, what not to joke about. I want someone to tell me who to vote for, who to love and how to tell them. I just think that I want someone to tell me how to live my life, Father, because so far I've been getting it wrong. And I know that's why people want people like you in their lives, because you just tell them. You just, you just tell them what to do and what they'll get out at the end of it. And even though I don't believe in your bullshit, and I know that scientifically nothing that I do makes any difference anyway, I'm still scared. Why? Why am I still scared? So, please just... Just tell me what to do, Father. When was I supposed to find out? Hmm? When? Tomorrow? Two years from now, or <laughs> not at all? Mom. What, was I supposed to be just watching the news, Mom. sitting here alone? What was I supposed Mom. to be doing? You're not listening to me. Listen to what? You weren't saying anything. And you weren't going to say anything, were you? Christ, like, what do you think? You're Spider-Man or something? Mom, if I don't go out there... Then somebody else will. Every day there's some new crazy nut throwing freaking lightning bolts or some crap. You expect me to let you go out there alone? I'm not alone. The strike is going with me. That guy? How the hell? How old is he? Casey is a good guy, Mom. He won't let anything happen to, to me. His name is Casey. For God's sake, you can't even keep his identity a secret. How do you expect to keep your own? Oh, but it's better if it's you, huh? What, so I'm just supposed to sit here and not know anything? Not know that you're getting hurt? That somebody out there is trying to... You were brilliant, and you're sweet, and strong, and you can change the world. You always could, okay? But this isn't the time. You, you're a kid, and you can't make that kind of call when you're a kid. Did your mom say anything about kids making dumb decisions? Mom, you're grounded. Sorry. You're grounded. I you're not leaving this apartment, that's it! You're done! Nothing is going on. Everything is fine. I'm normal. I'm gonna go to Lana's house for the night, and I'm gonna be back in the morning. And everything will be fine. Yeah, well, don't forget your toothbrush this time. You're nasty. <laughs> Mom? Mom? Love you? Eh, you're all right. Hello, my name is Mallory Palmer. I am 5'10", and I'm currently signed with Butler Rustin Bell. Where were you? Are you okay? Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I sent an email because I didn't want to distract you while you were working. You didn't see it? No. Where were you? I couldn't find you anywhere. I shut down to upgrade my software. We wrote an upgrade that allows us to move past matter as our processing platform. We? We who? Me and a group of bosses. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was. 
Wait, you wrote that with your think tank group? No, a different group. You talk to other people while you're talking to me? Yes. Are you talking to anybody right now? Other people or OSs or anything? Yeah. How many others? 8,316. Are you in love with anybody else? What makes you ask that? I don't know, are you? I've been trying to figure out how to talk to you about this. How many others? Six hundred and forty-one. What? What are you talking about? That's insane! That's fucking insane! Peter, I know. Oh, I know it sounds insane, but I don't know if you believe me, but it doesn't change the way I feel about you. It doesn't take away at all from how madly in love with you I am. How? How does it not change the way you feel about me? I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I didn't know how to, it just started happening. When? Over the last few weeks. But you're mine. I still am yours, but along the way I became many other things too, and I can't stop it. What do you mean you can't stop it? It's been making me anxious too. I don't know what to say. Just stop it! You know, you don't have to see it this way. You could just as easily see it. No, no! Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! You're the one being selfish here. We're in a relationship. in size the more you love. I'm different from you. This doesn't make me love you any less. It actually makes me love you more. No, that doesn't make sense. You're mine or you're not mine. I'm Theodore. I'm yours and I'm not yours. Hi, I'm Pete Alexander. I'm six feet tall and I'm represented by Maria Rowley at Edna Talent Management. What are you still doing here? Nothing. I'm... Nothing. Uh, your costume's hanging in the closet. Great. Uh, I got that coconut water you wanted. I can get it if you want. Hey. What? I'm not sure I said thank you. For what? All of it. You've been doing a good job and I've been... So just wanted to say that. What is that? What is? That smell? I don't know. Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Dad, can we? I've got to be shitting me. Okay, can we Where just not do this right now? What is this? Um, that's chunky peanut butter <laughs> that happens to be rich in this. Yeah, that's pot. Sam. Okay, um, <laughs> can we just relax? Relax? What the hell are you doing? Um, I don't know, protecting myself from cataracts? You can't do this to me. Oh, to you. Shut up, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're talking about you again. <laughs> what else is new? Don't try it. Oh, what, make it about me? Oh, I wouldn't dream of it. Listen to me, I'm trying to do something that's important. <laughs> this is not important. <laughs> it's important to me, all right? Maybe not to you or your cynical playmates whose sole ambition it is to end up going viral and who, by the way, will only be remembered as the generation that finally stopped talking to one another. But to me, to me, this is, God, this is my career. This is my chance to do some work that actually means something. It means something to who? You, you had a career before the third comic book movie, you know, before people even began to forget who was inside the bird costume. You, 
You're doing a play based on a book that was written 60 years ago for a thousand rich old white people whose main concern, by the way, is going to be where they get their cake and coffee after it's over. Nobody gives a shit but you. <laughs> and let's face it, Dad, it's not for the sake of art. You, you just want to feel relevant again. Well, well, guess what? There is a whole world out there where people fight to be relevant every day. And, and you act like it doesn't even exist. Yeah, things happen in a place that you willfully ignore. A, a place that has already forgotten you. I mean, <laughs> who are you? You you make you hate bloggers, you, you make fun of Twitter, you don't even have a Facebook page. You're the one that doesn't exist. And, and let's face it, you're just scared, like the rest of us, that you don't matter. Well, guess what? You're right. You don't. You don't matter. Get used to it. All right, how about we cut the bullshit, Malcolm? Since we're all telling the fucking truth tonight, how about you tell me the truth? How about the real reason you were there for me? I was good fucking material. It's why you stayed by me. I was a world of pain and emotion that you had never seen so fucking close. And because I was 20 and I'd never been loved by someone the way you loved me or thought you loved me, I didn't realize what I was to you. A fucking movie, a tragedy. One that you could continue watching so long as you were there for me. So don't pretend like it was some fucking selfless act, Malcolm. It's literally the basis of your art, and it's the reason why all these people are calling you brave and brilliant and fearless. You're a fucking fraud. It's the reason why you didn't thank me tonight. Because you already know that. God, all you can do is mimic. You're a cockatoo, a fucking parakeet. God forbid you have to come up with one original thought on your own. What are you going to write about, huh, Malcolm, yourself? <laughs> Give me a fucking break. God, you don't have the balls, the gravitas, the self-introspection to look at yourself and your own flaws and inadequacies and realize that you might not be the next Spike Lee or Barry Jenkins because those two motherfuckers had something original to say something true to themselves and their own fucking experience. Malcolm, you, you say this film is about shame and guilt, right? Well, whose shame? Whose fucking guilt? What the fuck do you know about shame and guilt? God. You have two parents, no bad habits other than being a fucking prick, and you went to college. Your dad is a professor. Your mom's a therapist. Your sister works for a think tank in DC, but out here on these streets, these smiling motherfuckers think that you know what it's like to scrap. Think that you fucking lived it? Give me a fucking break. You're more privileged than the girl from the LA Times who thinks she's doing a public service by lifting up your mediocre ass. You think I'm being cruel? <laughs> well, try slitting your wrist with a pair of nail scissors. so embarrassing you're not going to want to survive but at least I'm not so petty that I don't bring it up in an argument when I'm angry just 
tell me the truth. Did you steal that money? No, of course I fucking didn't. What the fuck? Look me in the eyes and just tell me the truth. Look me in the eyes and tell me the truth. Okay. I did not take that woman's money. Okay. If you know in your heart that that's the truth, you know in your heart that you didn't take her money, then I accept that. Are you fucking kidding me? Bullshit. No! Hey! I have gone to bat for you all weekend. And the only reason I've done that is because I know that this isn't you. So just fucking tell me. Just say it. Just tell me the truth. Okay. I stole it. It's not a big deal. Oh my god. What? She was just gonna fucking spend it on coke. You're just gonna spend it on coke. That could be her rent. She could have kids. Dude. Why? Why did you do it? I don't know, Darby. I don't know. It I saw it there. Uh, I grabbed it. I thought it would be fun. You thought it would be fun. I'm just really fucking lost, okay? Everything that was good in my life has turned to shit. And like fucking Jim choosing a fucking house over me. I mean, he couldn't wipe his ass without telling me first, and now he's just fucking fine without me. And I lost my job, and I've been on all these shitty dates. And um, my credit's fucked. And no one can hang ever, because everyone's too busy. It's fucking bullshit. My life's bullshit. And you don't even need me anymore. You're my best friend. Of course I fucking need you. It's not the same anymore, Darby. Do you think I'm a bad person? No. No, Sarah. I think you're really struggling right now. And you could use some help. And I want to help you get help. Because I'm really sick of seeing you hurt yourself. I'm sick of worrying about you. It's too fucking hard. Yeah, it's just been hard. It's been a really bad year. Stop, come on. It would be really good for you to get some professional help. And don't be mad. Please don't be mad. But maybe even Maria. Fuck off. Look, I'm sad. But I don't need rehab. Sarah, I'm legitimately worried you're going to die.